In today's video I'm going to be taking a look at the special edition 4K Arrow Films release of Paul Verhoeven's 1987 science fiction Robocop. It's a violent film so it won't be for everyone and in fact I hadn't seen this since it was on VHS release first time around which must have been about 1988 and I was surprised how much I enjoyed this and it's made all the more enjoyable with this fantastic presentation from Arrow Films. Robocop was a 35mm shoot, but there were 70mm blow-ups for premiere theatres, but those 70mm would have had black bars down the side because it is a 185 to 1 aspect ratio. There are various soundtracks on these discs. There are two discs. There's the original theatrical cut and there's the so-called director's cut, which has got all the scenes that were cut out for certification purposes in America to ensure it got an R rating rather than an X rating, which would have restricted the amount of cinemas it could have been screened in. The estimated budget for Robocop was $13 million and it took $53 million at the worldwide box office, so a huge success for MGM back in 1987. I watched both versions of the film for the purposes of this review and on this occasion for once I actually preferred the director's cut. There's not an awful lot of difference between the two versions but all the violence, the initial violence is left intact for the director's cut and that made it all the more tongue in cheek. It's so over the top you can't take it seriously and indeed the first occasion of this extreme violence is when Jones, the villain of the piece played by Ronnie Cox, who we also see in Paul Verhoeven's Total Recall playing a similar character, he presents the new robot style police officer who is going to patrol the streets of old Detroit. A young executive who's enthusiastic to help out in the demonstration gets blown to pieces by this robot. And it's really quite horrific, but the end of it, Dick Jones comes along to the old man, as he's called, the big boss of OCP, and he says, I'm sure it's just a glitch. Well, that rather sums up how this film is going to go. So if you are averse to a bit of violence, but you fancy seeing this film, just don't take that violence seriously because it really is supposed to be quite funny. A bit over the top at times, but I really enjoyed it this time around. Some of the special effects in this may look a little dated today, but one of the men behind the special effects and the Robocop suit is Rob Bottin, who was the genius behind the effects in John Carpenter's The Thing and plenty of other films such as The Howling. Some of the special effects that have been reinserted for the director's cut came, as we're told in this book, 80 pages this book, and it really is very interesting. They came from 35mm elements. Well, that can mean almost anything, can't it? So whether it was an interpositive or an internegative, probably just a fine grain theatrical print or premiere print, but whatever it came from, there is increased degradation in the image quality that's quite noticeable at times during those sequences that have been reinserted. However, if you're like me, you will be so into the film by the time these sequences come up that it really doesn't matter and you probably won't notice. Having said this though, it is possible that this film will be too grainy for some. There are a lot of 4K collectors out there that complain about film grain and it really is quite coarse at times on this one. Now when Robocop first comes on the screen you get the logo across the image of Detroit and that is of course an optical because there were no computers for doing graphics onto live action back in those days. So you may think, oh this doesn't look particularly good. Then it goes into a mock television news sequence and of course that's done to look like video and that doesn't look particularly good either but then you get into the true live action once another optical is out of the way and it really does improve markedly then you get the first outdoor shots and you see how good this really is but too much grain I fear for some I like the grain although it does look coarser to me than it possibly should and that's probably down to the scanning process used to transfer films these days so it's interesting that within the extra Robocop edited for television, which you'll find on the theatrical disc, they found some original 35mm master prints for the television version. All the profanity is removed and much of the violence is cut so it's not so in your face. Well, the image quality on that is far more colourful than the 4K discs. It seems brighter and it's got plenty of scratches on there and if you know what to look for, 
you'll see some neg dust as well. But overall to me that had a much nicer look than the 4K disc. However, would it have all come together so well if it wasn't graded as these 4K discs because the special effects, they all have to match the colour of the live action. So it'd be interesting to actually get hold of one of those television 35mm prints, give it a run in here and see what it looks like. Because one thing I did do was I ran the Super 8 print, the first reel of the Super 8 print in here, and it does match very closely as far as I can tell what the 4K of Robocop looks like. The grading appears very similar. But film grain, because of the lesser definition, isn't so visible on the Super 8. It's got other problems with the Super 8 because it is miniature and there's plenty of printer marks and things like that. But overall it's a nice look on the Super 8 and it does match up pretty well to the new 4K discs. There are four sound options to enjoy on either of the discs and they are Dolby Atmos 5.1, 4.0 and 2.0. The 4.0 will be the master files from which the original Dolby Stereo 4 Matrix Stereo was created. I believe that has actually been remastered for this release a little. There is the 4.0 as it was, but again remastered. There is the 5.1, which was, I believe, done by MGM back in 2013, and the new Dolby Atmos, along with all the other remastering done on Arrow's behest for this release. Now, the default is the 2.0, which is Dolby Stereo or Dolby Pro Logic, as it's known for the home, but many people tell me their equipment cannot handle Dolby Pro Logic. That's probably a soundbar issue because I can't believe any amplifier or receiver would be issued to the public that couldn't handle. Dolby Pro Logic. So of the four, I found that the Dolby Stereo sounded best in here. Now it was actually my wife pointed this out towards the end when the dialogue between Robocop and Kurtwood Smith, the chief villain of the piece, is great as they all are in this film. The dialogue was drowned out by the music and so I went back once the film was finished, I switched it to the Dolby Atmos tracks, it sounded the same. I tried the 4.0, it sounded the same. And then the Dolby Stereo, the 2.0s it's called on the menu, switched to that and the dialogue came up to what I believe to be the correct level. And all you have to do in order to make it sound just like the digital tracks, the other digital tracks, is turn the volume up a bit and Eureka, you've got very nice surround sound, but you can actually hear clearly what everyone is saying. Now I went back to the beginning, I went through the openings and quite a few bits of the film and throughout it sounded to me like the Dolby Stereo tracks, the 2.0, was the best. So give it a try, the Dolby Atmos might sound far different on your system if it's a genuine Atmos, but let me know what you think in the comments. But as I say, the Dolby Stereo sounded best in here. One thing I didn't point out about the packaging, it's got reversible artwork and I've reversed it already so I've got the original poster art for Robocop in there. And that's how it comes, but anyway, I prefer the original version. So that's how it's going to stay in there. And you have got the new artwork on the box anyway. Now apparently this package is identical to Arrow's previous Blu-ray release 2019 I believe, but none of the Blu-rays are in here so I can't advise if the 4K is better than the Blu-ray. It usually is, let's face it. But something to consider if you've already got the Blu-ray but you desperately want the 4K. You're not going to get anything new other than a slightly different picture. But I like it. And one of the main reasons for this film's success is Peter Weller as the Robocop. Uh, well, Murphy, as his real character name is. Nancy Allen is great as a support. The whole cast are good, and it's a great romp. It's a sort of a comic book sort of brought to life. So like many of the superhero films that are coming out today, only this one didn't come from a comic. It's terrific fun. I think it looks great. The sound is excellent, particularly on the 2.0 Dolby Stereo tracks. And I think if you can put up with the bad language, enjoy a bit of tongue-in-cheek violence, then £34.99 this cost me from HMV. I think this package is well worth every penny. Some of you may remember my recent video of FOP Covent Garden, which is a Cambridge circus in the West End of London, just up from Piccadilly Circus. I was given the delightful poster for last night in Soho. I showed that and said my plan was to get it framed. Well, it's now framed and it's up on the wall in here, looking very nice. But if anyone's interested in where this particular frame came from, it's a light box and they're sold on eBay by Adam. 
and I can put anyone in touch. I'll put a link in actually to where the sale currently is for that. It was £245, but it's another thing that I believe was worth every penny. It's not often I spend quite that much on something like this, but I thought this poster was so special. The best poster in years, in my opinion, just like posters of old when films like Robocop were around, and it looks fantastic in this light box. So, that's something maybe worth considering if you have a home cinema or you want to display a special double-sided poster. And these are snap frames. A poster can be changed in a matter of seconds or maybe a minute or two at most. So possibly a good investment for any movie enthusiast if you're as nuts about films as I am. As I record this, there's going to be a new Spider-Man film released on 4K on Monday. And um, although I haven't particularly liked the previous few outings of Spider-Man, I see Tobey Maguire appears in this one as Spider-Man and saw a bit part of sorts. So um, Andrew Garfield as well. So there's going to be three Spider-Mans running around. I'm sure most of you watching this or many of you have seen that film already. But um, it's arriving here on Monday, hopefully. And that should be my next review. Here's old Spidey. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, a like, and perhaps consider subscribing. So I'll be encouraged to keep producing content like this in the future. Until the next video, bye-bye for now.